Welcome back everyone to part four of our interaction system series. And in this part, we will be building our interaction widget. This will be the UI element that is rendered in the 3D world. Whenever an interactable comes in range, the widget pops up to tell us how to interact with it. So let's get started. All right, so the first step is to create the actual widget that we will be rendering. So I'm going to go into the interaction system folder, right click and search for widget blueprints and then choose user widget. I'm going to call it WB for widget blueprints underscore interaction widgets and open it up. So uh, the first thing uh, I usually add before uh, drawing anything or adding anything is a canvas panel. So we need a canvas panel. This is going to be our canvas where we uh, add other components. Uh, I'm going to resize it. So I'm going to do a uh, custom size of say 250 by 30. Uh, that's going to be the size of my widget. And by the way, this is just a preview size. We actually we still have to input these actual numbers when we render it. This is just to preview the canvas panel. All right. So I want there to be like a, uh, a background and then text on top of it. So I'm going to search for image. That's how I'm going to display a background and I'm going to drop it here. Oh, actually, sorry, before I do that, uh, we're going to add things on top of each other. Uh, so when usually when rendering things uh, on top of each other, you use an overlay component. Uh, overlay allows things to be stacked on top of each other. So I'm going to place this overlay component inside the canvas panel. And then up here, I'm going to anchor it to fill the entire screen. And I'm going to hold shift and control while clicking this so that it updates uh, the uh, position and alignment automatically. If I don't hold shift and control, I just select it, then I still have to go here and zero out all these values manually. Um, so this just does it for you. All right, so now we have our overlay. Uh, I want the image, which will be my background, place it here, and I'm going to have it fill horizontally and fill vertically as well. Um, and I'm going to change its um, brush to say draw as box. And then the color and opacity, I'm going to do it like a black color with uh, 20, let's say yeah, around 25% opacity. All right. Uh, one final thing before adding the text is I want to uh, make this color a bit blurred. So I'm going to add a background blur. So I'll place the background blur here. And again, I'm going to have it fill the whole area and let's say blur strength 30. You won't notice the blur here. Maybe you do slightly, uh, but uh, when when there's something behind it, the blur really adds a nice uh, effect. All right. So now we have our image, we have our background, and uh, we can also rename this. So we can call this the background color, and we can call this yeah. We can keep this the background blur, and we don't need it to be a variable. And then finally, we're going to add our text. So just take our text here and drag it. Say yeah, right here in the overlay yes it's in the overlay and uh, this is way too big so where's the font roboto bold about 14 and then center it align horizontally vertically and let's add some preview text something like uh, press e to interact and by the way, uh, later on, we're going to change all of these to be dynamic. So press is going to be a variable, whether it's uh, hold or press E, we're going to get this value from our uh, input mapping. And this to interact can be modified by our interactables to be something like to open door to close door to pick up item and so on. But for now, we're just going to start with basic static text. And that's pretty much our uh, widget for now. And let's see how we can render it uh, in the world. So first, I'm going to show you how to render it uh, manually. So I'm going to go to my uh, third person character here and show you the um, sort of hard coded way of rendering a widget. So I can go to my components panel here and search for widgets, this one. And this is a I'm going to put it under the mesh for now. And this is a widget component, not a widget blueprint. Um, so this is very important to notice the difference. And if you read the message, the widget component provides a surface in the 3D environment on which to render widgets. So this is just the place in the world where a widget will be rendered. So we go over here on the right to the settings and uh, we're going to change a few things. Space, we're going to make it screen space. So this widget is rendered sort of always facing the screen and not as a 3D object that has shadows and uh, textures and so on. 
And the draw size, here is what I told you, we, we have to configure the size again. So I'm going to do it 250 by 30, same as our canvas preview, and just search for my interaction widget. All right, so this is right now attached to the mesh. So if I play, you can see there is a widget attached to me wherever I go. Perfect. So this is how we uh, render widgets manually, but we want to do this programmatically uh, during runtime when an interactable comes in range, we want to render this widget on the interactable itself. And when we exit the range, we want to hide this widget. So let's see how we're going to do that. All right, so this widget component that we just added here to our third person character, I'm going to delete it, but we are going to add this component um, dynamically through our player interaction component. So I'm going to right click on our actor component and say edit to open it up. And like I said, the player uh, interaction actor component will contain all of the logic needed for interacting. So just by applying the component, we're going to have widget, we're going to have uh, input actions and so on. So how do we render this widget component um, just like we did in our player? But how do we do it here? So in my begin play uh, at the very end, uh, this is what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to get my owner. So this is the third person character that owns this or really any actor that uh, is using this component. And I'm going to say uh, add widget. Oh, sorry. I'm going to here right click away and say add uh, component by class and add it to the owner. And the component I want to add is the widget component. So just like we added it in the components panel of the third person character, this does the same thing. So I'm just going to say, get the owner and then add this component to it. And now we want to configure the same um, uh, properties that we configured in our widget component when we added it manually. So set widget space, and this is going to be the screen space. Then we're going to set the draw size and make it again 250 by 30. And finally, we want to promote this to a variable as well. So we're going to be able to reuse it later. So I'm going to promote it to variable and call it the interaction widget component. So this is the still the interaction widget component, not the interaction widget itself. We still have to render that. Right now, all we did is add the component to whomever is owning the uh, this actor component, but we haven't rendered anything within this component yet. And that's the next step. So for that, I'm going to create a separate function because we're going to be calling it in multiple places. And I'm going to call it the render interaction widget. And this function, uh, first, it checks if we do have interactables in range by getting our interactables in range array and checking that it's not empty. So we're going to do a branch and then check if this is not empty, then we will render it. And if it is empty, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So to render it, I'm going to call the function create widget. And then I'm going to pass to this function the interaction widgets that we created. And this is the actual widget blueprint. And then now we have a widget, but we haven't added it to the component itself. So then we're going to get our interaction widget component, the variable that we just created. And I'm going to say set widget. And set widget um, takes a widget variable, which is this one that we just created here. Perfect. So if there is an interactable in range, we create our widget and then we set it in the actor component. And if there is no interactable in range, I'm going to copy this, paste it here. And I'm going to set widget, but I'm going to leave this empty, the widget class empty. So I'm basically setting an empty widget, which is the equivalent of removing this widget from the uh, widget component. This is because if we uh, there are no interactables in range anymore, we want to hide the widget, and this will do exactly that. So right now we created this function to show or hide the widget depending on what's in range. And now we want to call it when something enters or exits our range. So over here, if you recall, we have this handle capsule overlap begin and end. And at the end, I'm just going to call uh, render render interaction widgets. And I'm going to call it both on overlap begin and end. All right, so now let's play and test this out. So right now, as soon as something enters my range, the interaction widget is properly rendering. And when I exit range, it exits, uh, the interaction widget stops rendering. 
Perfect. So if I pick up everything, no more interactables in range, so nothing uh, is displayed here. Exits my range. Nice. But we still have a problem, uh, which is the widget that we're rendering is being rendered uh, on top of the player themselves. So the widget is being rendered on top of the mesh. I don't want the widget to be rendered on top of me. I want it to be rendered on top of the item that I'm interacting with. And by the way, if you don't see the widget being rendered, it also might be rendered uh, in the 000 world space, which in my case is uh, probably in this corner here. Uh, this is because we didn't define a location for this to be rendered. So the actor component can decide where to render it right now, and it's deciding to render it on the roots of the uh, player. For you, it could be rendering somewhere else, depending on where you're attaching the actor component. So what we want to do is tell this widget where to render, and where we want it to render is actually on top of the interactable itself. So to do that, just after setting the widget here, I'm going to update the location of the widget component. Again, this is the thing that's being rendered in the 3D world. So this is what I want to update this location. Uh, so I can just say set world location and then give it a new location of the actor that I'm interacting with. But how do we know which actor I'm interacting with? Because I could, uh, there could be multiple actors in my range. So the array could have multiple ones. So how do I know which one? Well, right now, again, if you recall in the event graph, uh, what we do when we press the interact button, which was somewhere here, yeah. Uh, we try to interact with get zero, which means we get the first item, which is of index zero in this array. Um, so I'm going to make this into a function uh, that we can reuse. So I'm going to create a function and call it the uh, get active uh, interactable. Active interactable is the one that we're going to interact with if there are multiple ones within range. And this function just returns uh, the active interactable, which is of type actor, because any actor can be an interactable. And this is really up to you how you want to implement it. So we can um, get um, zero, so get the first one and return it, or you can also get the last one. So the last one, you need to get the last. So this gives you the last index. So the last index in this array and use that as the value. So I'm going to use get last because uh, usually the last one is the closest one. Uh, but here you can do a lot of things. You can do like uh, distance checks to get the closest one. Maybe one is invalid. So you skip it over and go to the next one and so on. But for me, this is enough to just get the last one. And I'm going to reuse this function here. So this is in the interact. After playing the montage, I'm just going to call the uh, get active, uh, no, not get active users, get active interactable. Uh, and we can also make it a pure function. So by clicking on this pure checkbox, it becomes a pure function, which means we no longer need execution pins. So if it's not pure, we need execution pins. If it is pure, we don't. Uh, since we're not really adding any input to it or execution um, uh, and using execution pins, so I'm going to make it pure. And that will be the target. So I'm getting the active interactable, calling its interact function, and then the interactor is still the owner. Now back to rendering the widget. So here we're setting the location of the widgets and we want to get the location of the active interactable. So again, I'm going to get active interactable, uh, get world, oh, sorry, get actor location. And that will be the location of the widget component. And so let's play and test this out. So now if I go near an interactable, nice, it renders right on the um, root of the interactable. But as I move, you see there's there's this weirdness that it's uh, moving with me. Uh, so it initially renders in the right place, but then as I move, the interaction widget keeps moving. That's because the widget is attached to the mesh or attached to the player character. So it first initially renders in the right location, but when I move, it doesn't re-render or re-update its location. So this happens. There's a very easy way to fix this, which is to go to our event graph. Here, where we add the widget component, we can just click on manual attachment. Manual attachment means don't attach it to any component, and I want to attach it manually myself. And I don't want to attach it to anything, really, so I'm going to just leave it as that. And now it attaches, uh, now the widget renders correctly uh, on the location that I gave it and isn't attached to my mesh. 
So it doesn't move when the mesh moves. And it's always going to attach, it's always going to render at the root of the interactable. So the door, for example, has the root here on the bottom left. Uh, so if you recall, let's open our BP door. And the root is here at this scene component. Um, we can change that if we want. So for example, we can just uh, move the door here. So the root would be somewhere here. And then we just need to readjust its location in the world. But now if I play, the widget renders right on the doorknob, which is great. Nice. And then as you pick up an item, the widget disappears. And it's nice that the widget also renders on the item, so it tells you which one you're about to interact with. So right now I can think, oh, maybe I'm about to interact with the shield because it's closest to me. No, but the sword came uh, within range later. So the sword is now the last item in the array. So that's the one I'm about to interact with. And then as soon as it becomes an invalid interactable, it changes and goes to the next one. Perfect. All right, so the widget is far from done. This is just a basic implementation of it. And in later parts, we're gonna keep adding more functionality to it to make it support dynamic text, have a progress bar for when the interaction type is hold or tap, and a lot more. But for now, we have a widget that is rendered in the 3D world on the interactable actor that we're going to interact with. And everything is being done through the actor component, which again means we have a very flexible and reusable component that we can apply to any player character or easily move from one project to another and have all of these cool features move with it. And that was it for part four. If you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button to get notified when I release new parts. And thank you so, so much for watching. If you wanna get the full project files, they're all available to download on my Patreon. You'll be supporting me and the channel so, so much by checking it out. So again, thank you all, and I will see you in the next one.